A troop of porcupines is milling about on a cold winter's day. To keep from freezing, they move closer together. When close enough to huddle, however, they start to poke each other with their quills. In order to stop the pain, they spread out, but again begin to shiver. This sends them back to each other, and the cycle repeats as they struggle for a comfortable place between entanglement and freezing. Schopenhauer's Porcupines is a famous analogy for the strife and longing apparent in almost all human relationships. It speaks of our frustrations with isolation and intimacy, the need to belong and be apart. Freud took it as a simple story on boundaries. No one can tolerate a too intimate approach to his neighbor. Winnicott took it as an articulation of the love-hate relationship often found between parents and kids. A more universal interpretation can be found in the psychoanalyst Deborah Lugnett's book of the same name, that love involves the handling of contradictory attitudes and emotions one feels about their significant other. As she often quotes the poet Molly Peacock, there must be room in love for hate. Once again, this boils down to a concern of the self versus the other, privacy and community, sexual union and a room of our own. Personally, this fable strikes at the depressing core of many, many moments of anguish and regret. When I am with someone, I desperately wish to be alone and to disappear into my thoughts and interests. And yet, when I have these true moments of solitude, I yearn to experience it with others. Sure, the steady emotional support of a partner is important, and to build towards something and share the memories and experiences with another is quite special. But so is this romantic desire to understand myself and meet others, to feel free and open. When reflecting on relationships, I begin to see it as the political issue of freedom versus security. Is this all life is? To never be truly satisfied either alone or with another? I've encountered those who are seemingly satisfied in long-term relationships, asserting that they have truly found the one. Only they would know, of course. And similarly, I've met those who are quite adamant about remaining single, that the emotional infringement of another would simply leave them claustrophobic. I don't believe I fit into either group. And perhaps that isn't the point. Like the porcupine, we don't entirely get to choose the extent to which we desire the embrace of others. Sometimes the coldness of winter is simply too much to handle. Likewise, everyone has their quills the traits and habits that are helplessly irresolvable and may cause harm to others. Rather than choosing whether to huddle together or spread out, perhaps it is best to spend our lives learning how to manage this dance of desire better, to huddle together in spite of the quills and beyond necessity, but rather because you actually want to. Schopenhauer adds an important thought to his story of the porcupines one that may offer an appropriate cure to the dilemma. Those with a great deal of internal warmth preferred to stay apart from the group, and so caused and encountered the least trouble.